you. What? All right. Um. So, uh, we got another one from Greg Geraldo. Hmm. Okay. Okay. The great Greg Geraldo. Yes. What we got? This is this is the most dangerous time in our history. Hmm. Okay. Okay. It's a very uh, fitting title, I guess, for the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Yeah. All over the world, you got um. You know, weather changing, you got volcanoes erupting, you got landslides. Yeah. You know, you got people at war. You got carjackings. Yeah. You home got home like invasions. That are high. You know what I mean? Very Raccoons. dangerous stuff out there, yeah. Dangerous <laughs> animals. Mosquitoes. Definitely, yeah, mosquitoes. Yeah. COVID. You know what I mean? COVID. <laughs> Sickness. Yeah. Cancer. Right. It's a lot of shit out there that's right. dangerous, man. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> I guess I don't know if all those things are what he's talking about. But yeah, yeah, you know, definitely. Um, so, yeah, just uh, with the you know, in these dangerous times, you know, just try to be safe and try to take care of the loved ones, you know. But let's see what Greg Dorado's about to talk about. You ready? Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Good. <laughs> Good. I live in New York City. I came in yesterday and uh, I, I almost didn't get into the country. I coughed in the airport. Man, <laughs> you don't want to do that, folks. Alarms go off, they tackle you, they drag you off to a room, they ask you questions for two hours, they took my temperature rectally. <laughs> I enjoyed it so much, they asked me if I was here to get married. I'll tell you. I was right. It was a, it was a gay marriage joke. It couldn't be. But we do have to mend fences, let's face it, right? Canada was very mad at the United States. He didn't want to be part of the coalition of the willing in the Iraq war. He didn't want to be part of it. He didn't want to jump on board with every other country. Everybody was with the United States, folks. Everybody. Bulgaria. They sent a couple dudes. Uh, Spain. They put together a little good luck pinata that they sent over. <laughs> which I thought was very supportive. And Canada didn't go, Canada didn't go. Canada always goes to war with the United States. I don't think, you guys don't even really have a military, you're just too polite to say no. You're like, all right, sure, we'll go. <laughs> you're not a warmongering country, let's face it. You're the only country in the world, you got your independence by asking nicely. <laughs> it was crazy. You're like, uh, yeah. You just said, England, come on, England, it's freezing over here, it's crawling with French people, you don't want to be a part of that, do you? We'll keep the queen on the money. What do you say? Come on. But you're so mad at the United States. It's the first time there's been this kind of tension between our countries. You're so mad you sent Celine Dion to Vegas to torture us for three years. <laughs> what? I thought that was too much. What happened to peace and prosperity at the end of the Cold War? Wasn't there supposed to be no more wars? Everything was supposed to get better. What happened? Now it's the most dangerous time in history. Everybody's got nuclear weapons. India, Pakistan, North Korea. India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons. Those are dirt poor countries, folks. Where do they get nuclear weapons? Their armies don't even have matching uniforms, for Christ's sake. You know, they go to war, they gotta call each other up. Where's something tough looking? What is happening in the world? There's wars everywhere. There's more crazy, insane diseases. Every freak virus outbreak everywhere. You know, in the States, we had this uh, monkeypox outbreak. Monkeypox. Oh, a real shit. disease called right. the monkeypox. And they figured out that people were getting it because they were playing with their pet prairie dogs. And they tracked it down. Within three days of the first outbreak, they, they tracked it down, tracked it back to a, a pet shop in Wisconsin where a prairie dog had shared a cage with an African rat from Namibia and became infected with the monkeypox. What? What kind of detective work is that? Who's doing this stuff? Where, where's Osama bin Laden? Where's Saddam Hussein? Where are the weapons of mass destruction? You can't, uh. you can't, find, you can't find any of this stuff. We can't find any of this stuff, but we find a gopher with the sniffles and a terrarium in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> I live, I, live, I live in New York City, and that's, you know, that, every, you're worried about terrorism all the time. The other day, my son says to me, Daddy, how come the bad men hate us so much? How come the bad men hate us? How sad is that? I actually, I actually got tears in my eyes, because he's 18. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a moron am I raising? <laughs> I said, I don't know why they hate us, dummy. Why don't you read the paper and form your own opinions? <laughs> 
But he's not gonna read the paper. Americans, let's face it, Americans have no idea what goes on in other countries. Americans don't know anything about other countries. We don't read the paper. Well, I don't... Damn. Wait a minute, don't, don't turn me into the Dixie Chicks up here with that. I'm saying we don't read the paper. I'm not saying, you know, we stink badly enough to deserve that ovation. We don't... Americans have no idea what goes on. I was talking to this Arab guy the other day, and he said, why do the Americans always support the Israelis? Why do the Americans always support the Israelis? He said, it's probably because in America, the Jews have all the money and they control the media, which is ridiculous and paranoid and really only part of it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Americans have no idea what goes on in the, in the Middle East. The average American has no idea what's going on between the Israelis and the Palestinians. That's so true. basically, Americans support the Israelis for one reason, because the Israelis never do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> and the average American's like, I don't know what's going on over there, but I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going with the team that ain't doing that. That I don't like. And then this guy told me it stinks for him. He's always stereotyped as a terrorist. Whenever he travels, people assume he's a terrorist. And that does suck, but you know what? You know, in America, every ethnic group has a stereotype that they've had to overcome at some point in their history. I'm half Colombian and half Spanish. I don't get upset every time people assume that I'm a bullfighter. I don't. I just deal with it. It's my little cross to bear. I can't be seen with a sword or a cape. You don't think that hurts me as an American? You don't think I'd love to wear my skin-tight pink capri pants with a bedazzling on them? Now in America, they don't even say French. They don't even say French. Freedom fries, freedom toast. Even fiance, even French words like fiance were changing. Even fiance, they're changing to person who'll eventually suck the will to live right out of me. We're changing. It. I can't. Uh, I can't figure out the relationship thing. You know, I'm married, sort of, but you can't. Uh, <laughs> sort just of. Once, I'd like to see a movie that gets relationships. You know, I rented that movie Monsters Ball the other day, and it was supposed to show you that love can triumph over racism, which is a great message. But the casting was ridiculous. You got Billy Bob Thornton playing a racist corrections officer who somehow manages to overcome his racism enough to have sex with Halle Berry. <laughs> wow, good to see people rise above the hate like that, huh? <laughs> it's Halle Berry. I'm pretty sure even the Grand Wizard of the KKK could have walked across that bridge. <laughs> If they, uh, if, if they wanted to make a big statement, it should have been Brad Pitt and Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that was brutal. Yeah, yeah man. He was right. <laughs> Yeah, man. Someone like a prophet comedian, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Cause I, you know, monkeypox. We had a little. Everybody was scared about monkeypox for a little bit. Who the fuck did all? Who who did the investigative work on monkeypox? Who did the tracking down of the? What do you say, groundhogs? Yeah, or? Prairie dogs. Prairie or dog. Like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Actually, who did who did that with the coronavirus? Didn't they find out that the coronavirus came from a pangolin? I don't know, man. A pendulum, pangolin. A bat. No, they're like the pangolin. Uh, Those, okay. I don't even know if that's the way that they're pronounced. No, I think it was a bat. No, it wasn't a bat. No, okay. Okay. Like, so like a, well, yeah, I've heard a lot of things. Yeah, yeah somebody yeah, said yeah, it came yeah, from yeah, a lab. Yeah, yeah, Some people yeah, say it came yeah, from a yeah, lab. Yeah, yeah, the Wuhan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, whatever it is. But yeah, man. That shit was dangerous. And he knew about, you know what I'm saying? Well, he said sickness. He didn't necessarily say that. Yeah, man. Yeah, I guess it was like that. He said he coughed in the airport. <laughs> and they took him to security. <laughs> Couldn't even cough in the airport, yeah. Um, that issue was. Yeah, you got a mask on. You know. Yeah, they weren't wearing masks back then. Do we no. wear masks? In, we didn't wear masks like during the monkeypox era. I mean, you probably should have been, but, you know. But they wasn't, there wasn't There wasn't a mask mandate. No, nah, no, nah, that's not enough. No, they weren't wearing it, no. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad to miss the monkey pox, man. That would look like it hurt. Well, the monkey pox you got, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang. Yeah. It's pretty tough, man. Yeah. Yeah, dangerous times, man. Man, we're kind of hitting on the head, man. You know, everybody's got nuclear weapons and stuff, you know? 
But are these the most dangerous times? Because, I mean, like, back in the day, motherfuckers didn't live past, like, 30. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, that was like that. I mean, that's the average life. I don't think that's dangerous, necessarily. Like, why did they die, though? Why are you dying at 30? I don't, I don't if you, you have to get killed or something that had to kill you. <laughs> if you, like, right. a disease or, like, uh, right. 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 you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Like, remember the... the the yeah, plague like or something. Animals and stuff, you know. And, yeah, animals. And things that's like dangerous. That, you know. But I think, like, live to 30. I think that was, like, a long, long time ago. Long, yeah, well, long, however long, long time, time ago. ago. Whatever time that was, that was the most dangerous time. <laughs> whatever time it was, whatever it was living. Way back then. But, uh, but that, was, yeah. that had to be the most dangerous time. Right. <laughs> Niggas must have, wouldn't go out the house, they get. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Definitely. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess, you know with nukes and shit that does make now because the whole, the whole fucking world can end. Right. So right. I guess now is right. the most dangerous time. Right, man. That's why people should just live their lives out, man. You know what I mean? And just, you know, not worry about these things, but, you know, yeah. just kind of, you know, I guess like we've already, I mean, already, we're already like, should be used, you know what I'm saying, to these type of things. Nuclear yeah. weapons, people having what they have and under threat of that. Yeah. So, I mean, Try to live life as best you can. You know? There's gonna be wars. Hopefully they will stop, but yes, wars will always be there. Yeah. Yeah. Great Toronto. Yeah. <laughs>